Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video I'm going to test out the Shuttle Mark II in 1.11 with Realism Overhaul and see if it works. I haven't made any changes to the exterior look of it. Uh, I did make an adapter for, uh, the, for the rocket but I might need to resize that. The, these fins in particular are supposed to be longer on the base but I didn't put cutouts in the adapter for those fins so I'm gonna have to do that so some changes will already already need to be made uh, but the main change for this it was that I turned it into the same kind of cabin that I have with the Shinkansen in fact it is the same cabin except it doesn't have the hab area so it actually has three seats here instead of four because in the position that I put the fourth seat the hatch swings so a Kerbal would get waxed the hatch does have a collider uh, but I, we, I could put a seat back here, I guess, but there's a, you know, leg room thing. I don't know how much room we need. I've, I've been pretty uh, luxurious with the leg room so far, uh, to be honest. I think there's plenty, but yeah, anyway, I need to uh, work on a few things here. Again, the interior isn't finalized. I also want those little sort of packages. There's a lot of plans. There's a lot of plans, but... The point is that it has the same interior now. Uh, I still need to sort of fix the front of it a little bit. Obviously, it doesn't quite match the windows exactly there. This area needs to be filled in. And I don't have all the stuff in front. Oh, in fact, uh, I guess I missed some of the model, uh, some of the stuff that was on the panel here. I'll have to figure out where those went. Okay, but anyway, this was a little bit complicated to do making the cabin in there because if you haven't seen this before uh, this is actually an escape pod these are the abort motors and it decouples but what that means is there's a decoupling plate here that I needed to cut a hole in compared to the original version and then I also needed to cut a hole in the bay right uh, this was solid before it was a hat you know it's one of those Kerbal hatches it's not uh, you know an open area so I need to cut a hole in each of these and then adjust all the colliders to make sure that Kerbals could pass through and also I have to adjust the colliders on here this was one solid collider for this whole bit here well that doesn't work anymore if we want Kerbals to sit in and be able to float about uh, which for those who didn't see the Shinkansen video is the goal of this kind of cockpit these are command chairs they can get out of the chairs and float about inside the cabin and so we need to make sure that the colliders, so there's now a lot of colliders on that cockpit to make sure that they stay inside but can move about within there. And then we could have the docking port arrangement and other stuff. For those not familiar with this, this design, this was my answer to a shuttle to the moon. Uh, basically, it's much smaller than the full space shuttle because it does the full space shuttle doesn't need to be that big to go to the moon. The size of the bay was dictated by the need to put tanks that would allow this to transfer to the moon and so it has just enough space to have two tanks uh, to transfer to the moon that would be the moon transfer propellant and then the propellant in the tail itself would allow it to capture into orbit and rendezvous with a station and it's methane oxygen in this setup there was a mmh nto setup as well but this is the this is the methane oxygen setup. So that was the idea. No silly, really bulky, useless shuttle going to the moon. This is a nice trim shuttle. And what launcher do we launch this on? Well, for low Earth orbit, I think we can do with a Vulcan rocket with six boosters, just for safety's sake. Uh, if we were to fill the tank with uh, propellant, we would probably need a bigger rocket in order to get to the moon. And so that would be New Glenn and above. Possibly we would need something heavier than New Glenn. It's already sort of started the timer. That's not the best sign. Uh, I only put half fuel in the upper stage because we really don't need that much. So with that in mind, throttle up, SAS on, ignition. And launch. A healthy liftoff there. Uh, it's about two Gs. Somebody on Twitter recently suggested that the 
Vulcan with six boosters had three Gs off the pad. No, that would be bad. <laughs> um, that would be bad. Uh, I think the miscalculation came from the person uh, taking the thrust and only dividing by the mass of the regular Vulcan and not taking into account the mass of the boosters also being added then. Uh, oh, oh, oh no, oh no, oh no, we... Uh, okay. Well, yeah, the aerodynamics will be a little bit tricky, won't it? I guess we can try a different kind of test at this point. Um, can we get rid of that? I want. I guess we could do the abort. Oh, I forgot the parachutes. See, that's not good. The abort system is supposed to have parachutes on. Uh, they go right there. I didn't actually add the parachutes, so... Oh, I didn't add the crew either. That might be important. We don't have the best control surfaces because of the adapter issue, right? It might be because the tail is heavy. Let me try and dump the fuel. Yeah, dumping the fuel has helped our balance. Naturally tended to... Oh, okay. Briefly naturally tended to prograde. I don't think this is going to survive. Flight testing. Further flight testing might be necessary. Nah, trying to light the engines is useless. This week has been rather rough on the space planes. <laughs> SpaceX had all the luck this week. Well, good thing there weren't any Kerbals. We're gonna have to be a little bit more careful about turning on... Oh right, it's water. I guess that does complicate things. Right. Okay, let's try that again, but much more carefully. Okay, well now we have Kerbals in. At least we know they have their own parachutes. That might be useful. But hopefully we can control this a little bit better. We've got the, the wings tucked in and everything. Anyway, SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. I'll keep an eye on the pitch that we're using. And launch. Uh, this seems weird. There's something weird going on. Wait, wait. We, we're not supposed... What just happened? It was not accelerating at its 2Gs. There's something weird about Kerbal. There's something weird about Kerbal. There's something horribly wrong here. That... That seemed wrong. Uh-oh. Was there a... Oh, there was some red back there. Something was out of range, but that was like before we launched. Non-negative. Hmm. Oh, I think we should stick here and... Ooh, the pitch is being used already. I might have to just test this out in KSP 1.8.1. I'm sick of having aerodynamic issues in this version. It's really maxing out the pitch there. Otherwise I'd turn much faster than this, of course. If you're wondering about the center of mass of the payload itself being an issue, we'll find that out when we get to the second stage. Uh, our pitch is getting a little bit better as we get out of the lower atmosphere here, but we've gone really steeply. Okay, booster set. Not exactly the most vigorous separation, but okay. Yeah, now our pitch is okay, so it was that was just all aerodynamics, at least. Now that weird Dragon SSTO business going on. Because that wiggled even after we got out of the atmosphere. Uh, maybe I should keep some pitch. The upper stage is a very long stage. Half its normal length, but still. I guess we can unlock that. That was just to keep it from fueling up.
All right, separation and ignition. And well, maybe a little bit of pitch up. And lots of physical time warp. Actually, this might be a good time to extend the wings for the heck of it. They have to be extended before the cargo bay opens up anyway. Oh, and we can uh, let go of the abort system. I still didn't put the parachutes on. So, abort system jettison. That's a little bit weak. Ooh. But there was that weirdness on launch though. I don't know why we were so slow to pick up speed initially. That's uh, That seemed like a glitch to me. And that's clearly had an effect. We should have had enough Delta V to get to orbit just on this stage, but we'll need the service module to finish things off, which we can do, but that was not meant to be. We should have had more than enough Delta V to get to orbit. Okay, well, the Centaur is gonna deorbit itself naturally. Let's see how this decoupler works. Well, this adapter. It's an odd shape, and because there is a collider on the tail of the shuttle, the collider on the adapter had to be particular too. So let's see. Um, I'll put on RCS on here, uh, which will be activated by this. And go. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, there was some collision, but it didn't kill anything at least. Yeah, we need a lot more control surfaces. The problem is because these are animated parts, right, they can go up or down. I couldn't put the control surfaces on the wings. At least, uh, I don't know how to use... Um, there's a module for that, but I don't know how to use it. Okay, well, that's a good enough orbit for now. And so, let's open up. Uh, so, as far as the consumption goes, it says 3 crew 300 days, and that's just wrong. I mean, what it should be is about 14 days. That's what I put into this. And I think... Yeah, 14 days would be the standard realism overhaul rate of consumption, but it's not doing that for some reason, even though we've got realism overhaul and we've got tack life support and the realism overhaul should be overriding those numbers, but apparently it's not. So that is an issue. But for now, let's see. Um, I'm going to get my camera in there. All right, uh, let's have Val do it this time, even though it might be dangerous. Everybody has to share the burden. Uh, ah. uh, somebody suggested uh, there was a Kerbal first-person view mod. Well, that doesn't help me get into them, into the cockpit to get to them like this. We'll see. Okay, so she's left her seat, but look how little food, water, and oxygen she's, she's carrying. Uh, okay, it'll help right now to have a... Uh, yeah, the EVA propellant is being consumed really fast. Like somebody did those Gemini missions in re-entry and figured that that's how it's supposed to be. You have like 30 seconds worth. <laughs> okay, out, out. At least it's a small cabin. Um... It'd be great if you could turn towards it, Val. Mm, okay, fine. Back out. Um, up. Up. Back. Oh, she's turning eventually. Okay, she's out. Okay, well, at least she's not consuming so quickly that she's gonna die. So that's good. And I'll be careful with the EVA propellant. But SAS is so not working right now. Why is SAS not holding her orientation anyway? That was a five-star pilot. Should be able to hold orientation. Yeah, 
And our EVA propellant consumption is so fast too. Okay, back in. Let's see if we can get back to the seat. Forward command chair. Okay, so successful EVA with Val. We already know that the aerodynamics of this are not good right now. But um, at least the consumption out of the seat was not so severe that immediately we were like losing everything. But they should be carrying more than that with them, at least compared to previous versions of Realism Overhaul, and that didn't happen. And the consumption rate on the TAC Life Support stuff should be higher. And of course, the EVA propellant consumption was really high compared to what we're used to. So I'm going to have to look into that because we want them to do a little bit more with their EVAs. Given that, you know, it's inconvenient. There's no tether, basically, is the thing. There's no tether. And placing a whole lot of handholds means a lot of part count. And a lot of part count means that there will be lag. So I think using the EVA packs is preferable. But we'll think about things. For now, I'll close the hatch there, and it is sealed. All right, so experiments continue. Uh, next time, maybe I'll try better engines on the Shinkansen to see if it can carry some payload to orbit, and that was an idea. But for now, this has been the Shuttle Mark II, and perhaps we should at some point try it out on a way to the moon. But the launch, the launch gives me pause because there is obviously something wrong. All right. Well, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.